So we're going to talk about the dot product and where it comes from. And we're going to use it for vector projections. This is something that we're actually going to be able to use um, for non-right angles is really what this is leading up to. So all the stuff we've done so far is using it for right angles. And now we're going to be able to solve in triangles using this process for non-right angles. And it's not as complicated as your law of cosines. So that helps. Um, they use the concept, if you look in the book, they use the concept of, uh, let's see, if I wanted to find the vector BA, I would use my Pythagorean identity, right? Our Pythagorean theorem, where I would subtract my x's um, and square them, and then I would subtract my y's and square those. Uh, that not subtract, that's not subtract, that's add. Um, right, and then when you square both sides, you're going to get this guy squared. You don't have to write all this down, by the way. I'm just showing you where we get it from. <laughs> all right, um, and then they actually foil this out. So they foil both of these. I'm not going to show all the foiling, and then they group them. And you end up with... Um, the magnitude of A, like when you FOIL all of this, you end up with like A1 squared plus A2 squared, and you end up with B1 squared plus B2 squared, which ends up being your magnitude squared of the first guy, your magnitude of the second guy, and then you have this leftover piece, two of what happens when you multiply the X's of them and add it to the multiplication of the Y's. And this little piece of that foiling, when you foil these guys out, you get this little piece. That is your dot product. That is your dot product. And that's where they get dot product. So the dot product is what we're going to use, but that's where they get it from. They get it from your Pythagorean theorem. And so let's look at the concept of dot product. Um, and we're going to go from there and use it to find um, angle measurements and all. So if we look at the concept here on the middle of page 500, <clears throat> dot product, that's the little piece we just did. The A1, B1, A2, B2. What it represents is your X values of your one vector and your Y values of your second of your um, vectors. So A1, B1 are your X values of each vector. A2, B2 are your Y values of each vector. Okay, so you can think of it as x1, x2, y1, y2. You can also think of it that way if it helps you grasp what they're doing. They took the product of the x values and they add it to the product of the y values. That is what's called your dot product, your dot product, all right? Now, um, for any type of angle except a right angle, you're gonna get some um, numeric value there other than zero. If the vectors um, have a zero dot product, they are perpendicular. So this term orthogonal vectors, that just means they're perpendicular. If they are perpendicular, this dot product will be zero. And so if they are orthogonal, orthogonal is just a new term meaning your dot product is zero, and what it indicates is that you have perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines form what type of angle? Right angles, okay? So perpendicular lines form right angles. If your dot product is zero, it is telling you you have a right angle between those two vectors, okay? So that's what orthogonal is telling you. Just a new term indicating your dot product is zero and that you have right angles there. Finding the dot product is not hard. <clears throat> when they want dot product, they're gonna have U and they're gonna have this really distinctive dot and V. When we are talking about vectors, that does not mean multiplication between the vectors, um, even though you're using multiplication, all right? So it's a different concept it actually means dot product, and so we're going to multiply pieces of it, but then you add them together. So when they want the dot product of u and v, then they want you to take the x values and multiply those, 
and then you add the product of the y values, all right? And then you just do the process, three times negative four, six times two, your dot product here is zero. This tells you some things about this. They are orthogonal. So you're gonna say, yes, those are orthogonal. And you know that these two are perpendicular. So you know that these two vectors are perpendicular. And if you look at the picture, they have the right angle there, but even if you didn't have that right angle there, you could do that orthogonal. You, you establish that process after that. All right, if I'm finding my dot product here between u and v of this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. My x value times my x value plus my y value times my y value. So my dot product here is 36. These are not orthogonal. So you would say, no, they're not orthogonal. And at this point, that's all we can tell about it. We will get more information as we go. We're gonna get a little bit more formulas here, but at this point, you're just telling me yes or no, is it orthogonal? So go ahead and try guided practice A and B there, top of page 501. Properties of dot product commutative, order does not matter. It's multiplication and addition, so it would make sense that order would not matter. Um, distributive, you can do a dot product between the sum of two, and it's the same as doing the dot product individually and then adding them. Um, scalar, you can multiply a scalar through. Now you'll notice, I want to pay attention here, when you have an addition sign, that u dot product applies to both of them. When it's scalar, it's all multiplication, you notice it's either that times the u or that times the v. You don't multiply it twice or you would be have k squared, okay? So you don't distribute when it's multiplication inside. It's legit just multiply, multiply, multiply. You don't multiply it twice. It's just something that people sometimes try to do. But um, zero times something is zero, and then a, a, some, a vector times itself is vector squared, so the magnitude squared, all right? All right. Angle between two vectors. If theta is the angle between non-zero vectors, why would we say non-zero? Because if it's orthogonal, do we need to try to figure out what the angle is? What is the angle if it's orthogonal? Zero. 90. All right? Oh. So. <laughs> so assuming it's, it's, it's not orthogonal, then you're, then you're saying, well, then how does this help me? Everything we've done so far has been right triangles, right? We've set up a right triangle. We have calculated using SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA doesn't work on non-right triangles, right? Um, you can use the law of cosines, which that went just swimmingly well when we did that one, right? Um, and so this is yet another way to help find that angle. And so what's happening here is you have your two rays right here, your two vectors. Um, some angle is in between. Um, we, the dot product is not zero, because if it were, we were done. And so if we have a non-zero vectors, then you can actually solve back into it the dot product of the two vectors over, and this little notation does not mean absolute value in vector world. What does it mean? Um, magnitude. The absolute value signs here are magnitude. Magnitude. That's the so length the of A the times the magnitude of B. So the cosine of theta equals the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes. Okay? Now, right. that means if I'm trying to solve the angle, I'm not going to use cosine. What am I going to use if I'm trying to solve for the angle? The inverse cosine, which means 
that I can say the inverse cosine then would be what happens when I plug this guy in to my inverse trig function, okay? And then I can solve back to the angle, all right? And they show me the proof. The proof actually comes from the law of cosines, all right? But I feel like it's easier to remember. I feel like this is easier to remember than the law of cosines for some reason for most people. All right, so the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes. That is your angle between the two vectors. Dot product divided by product of the magnitudes. All right, so let's look at finding um, the angle between the two vectors. All right, so let's look at this. If I want to know, um, I'm going to say, well, to find my angle, I'm going to take the dot product, all right, between these two which means I'm gonna take six times negative four plus two times three. That's gonna be my numerator, right? That's my dot product, is it not? We just did it multiple times, okay? Over my magnitude. Well, what's my magnitude? My magnitude of my u is going to be the square root of six squared plus two squared, right? times the magnitude of v, which is negative four squared times, or plus, not times, plus three squared. Okay? So that's what we're trying to find here. You can go ahead and simplify it if you want to. Um, six and negative four is negative 24. Two and three is six, so negative 24 plus six is negative 18, right? Over, 6 squared is 36, 2 squared is 4, so the square root of 40, times negative 4 squared is 16, plus uh, 3 squared is 9, that's the square root of 25, which is 5, right? Now, if you're actually putting this into your calculator, you can actually do it at this point, all right? You can do it at this point. Um, they simplified it, so they took a 4 out, so 2 squared of 10, so in your book, you're going to see negative 18 over 10 squared of 10. But if you're using your calculator, obviously, because you're not going to do inverse cosine in your head, mm -hmm. necessarily, um, you can actually plug it in at this point. So when you put all of that in, it's going to round to approximately 125 degrees. All right, what does that tell us? If you look at the... <clears throat> figure on the coordinate plane here. We have our first vector, which goes six, two, right? That's our first vector. Our second vector goes to negative four, three. We calculated this angle in between the two vectors is what we just did, 125 degrees. All right, let's look at the next one. <clears throat> if I want to find this one, I'm gonna say the cosine of Inverse here, the dot products, so 3 times 3 plus 1 times negative 3 over the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared times the square root of 3 squared times negative 3 squared, which is the cosine inverse, obviously. 9 plus negative 3. I don't know what they did there, they reduced. And then square root of 10 and square root of 18. They simplified, so um, when you do this, two and five, two and nine, three and three, you actually get six square root of two, or six square root of five, sorry. Um, so when you, when you see in your books that they did six, they reduce that bottom. And so that's why you have one over the square root of five in your books. But you can, if you're just finding the angle, you can plug it into your calculator at that point without reducing. You can legitimately plug it all in. You're gonna get the same answer. So when you plug that in, again, you'll get approximately 63.4 degrees. And if you look once again, you'll see what happened here. We had a vector that started at the origin and went to three, one started the origin, went to three, negative three. The angle in between those two vectors is 63 degrees. 63 degrees. 
So how would that help you potentially? Well, at this point, I could do my Sokotoa to find this guy if I needed to do movement here. Like, there's a lot of things then you could do at that point if you knew the angle in between them, right? If you needed no direction or if you needed to know something else, that can help you if you know that angle in between them. Projection. So we have done um, different vectors when we did navigation. Um, we have decomposed vectors, meaning we've, we've done, okay, look at this vector and look at this vector separately and then combine them at the end type things. And then we're going to do what happens when you project one vector onto another. So this example that we have, we have a vector here, u, and we have a vector here, v. And we're going to see what happens when we project that, when they make, we make them parallel. And we project one vector onto another. How does it affect the vector? What's my new effect on what's going on? This is a whole little combination of things we've been doing. This guy means dot product. You have done that. Dot product, U and V. This guy means magnitude. Okay, magnitude, you've also done. And then this is just multiplying the vector itself. So your answer here is going to be a new vector. Your answer here is going to be a new vector. All right? So you're solving for that V or you're putting a vector in there? You're actually taking your original vector and you're multiplying it. You're going to have a scalar multiplication at this point. A scalar multiplication. All right? So just like you'll end up with a number here, right? Let's say we have three. And then you're going to multiply it onto the vector, the X and the Y of that vector. All right? So the first question just is like plug these numbers into what we just did, okay? That's all they're asking us to do. We have the vector u, which is 3, 2, and we have the vector v, which is 5, negative 5. They want us to find the projection of u onto v, right? And then they want us to um, write u as the sum of two vectors. So then we're just going to find... Basically what we're doing was we're finding the new vector and then we're saying, how would we get from here to here? How would we get from one to the other? We, what do we need to add or subtract to get from one to the other? So it's a simple subtraction is what you're doing at the end. The first thing we're gonna do is just find the projection. The projection of u onto v, order matters, okay? u onto v, because we have the dot product of u and v then on the bottom, it's the magnitude of what is, what's being projected onto, right? So you'll notice the guy that was up after the onto goes here, okay? So it does matter how it's worded. U is projected onto V. So the first thing we're going to do is the dot product. That's our numerator, all right? So our numerator here is the dot product. So we're going to say our dot product would be the X's times each other. So we have 3 times 5 plus the y's multiplied together, 2 times negative 5. All right. Our denominator is the magnitude of v. The magnitude of v squared. All right. The magnitude of v squared. How do we find magnitude? with a square root, right? So, so I'm going to say the magnitude of this guy, the magnitude of this one, so that's going to be 5 squared plus negative 5 squared, and then I'm going to square it. Hopefully that should just 
ring something true here. All right. When I square a square root, what happens to it? It just cancels, okay? So you think about what your magnitude does, and when you square it, you really are just taking what's inside the magnitude formula there. All right, and then I'm gonna multiply that by my vector, by my V vector. So does everybody see how I plugged all the pieces in? All right, then, so we have three times five, that gives us 15. Uh, plus two times negative five, which is negative 10. So 15 plus negative 10 gives us five in the numerator here. On the bottom here, we get 25 plus 25. So we have the square root of 50 squared, which just gives us 50, right? We just, just gets, it gives us 50. Five over 50, and we're gonna multiply that scalar through. Now, you can reduce this five over 50. So it's, it's just a fraction. So if it is reducible, go ahead and reduce it. If not, you're gonna end up reducing it at the end. So you can go ahead and reduce this guy, right, to one over 10. One over 10, and then we're gonna multiply it through. It's scalar multiplication here. So you're literally just multiplying it through. Five over 10, that's one half. Negative five over 10, that's negative one half. That is the resulting vector. That's the resulting vector, all right? Now, they ask us then to write it as a sum of two vectors, to write it as a sum of two vectors. Um, so basically we're saying um, if it were two vectors, you would have u equals two different vectors, all right? One of those vectors we've already calculated, which is the projected vector, all right? So if we want to find what else we would have to add to it, um, we would just say, well, u minus our projected vector that we just found should equal the other guy that we're trying to find, if we were trying to be a sum of two different vectors, all right? We know what u is. u is this guy right here. u is 3, 2, and we're going to subtract what we just projected, 1 half, negative 1 half. 3 minus 1 half is 5 halves. 2 minus a negative 1 half is also 5 halves. So the way we could write u then, I'll scooch all this up. We could say, well, u would also equal my projected vector, this guy, 1 half, negative 1 half, plus this other guy. I could write it as two different vectors here. So they're just asking me to rewrite him as a sum of two vectors, one being the projected one and one being one we calculate by subtracting the, the projected one. They're just asking me to rewrite you as the projected vector t plus something else. So just subtract it from you to write it as the sum of two vectors the sum of two vectors. Find the projection of u onto v, then write us u as a sum of two orthogonal vectors, one of which is the projection of u onto v. So we're doing exactly the same thing. 
if you look at so all they did was they changed directions whereas you um v was going this direction here right and so now they're actually making it parallel but going the so what they're basically saying is it doesn't matter if the direction is different as long as it's parallel all right it doesn't matter if the direction is different so you're going to do the projection exactly the same you're going to do the dot product between the two so you're still going to do four times two plus negative three times six on the top you're still going to do the magnitude of the v so two squared plus six squared square it so that guy's going to go away and you're still going to multiply it by the v all right so then we'll have eight negative 18 we have a negative 10 on top this is four and 36 square root squared so we have just 40 down here two and six i would reduce that Yep. Okay, jumping ahead of myself, two and six. And then um, also reduce it when you do this. Two over four reduces to one half. Six over four reduces to three halves. All right. Um, and again, if you wanted to do this as a sum, so let's say we wanted to rewrite u as a sum, you would say that's going to be this guy plus some other guy plus that. So we're going to take u and subtract it. We're going to go back to our u. We're going to say 4, negative 3, and we're going to subtract this guy here. All right. And so you'll get like, I think, 9 halves and 3 halves. So again, you can do it as a sum of 2 by subtracting it. All right. A sum of 2 by subtracting it. All right, so a 3,000 pound car sits on a hill inclined at 30 degrees as shown, ignoring friction. We are not taking friction into consideration. I have to say that for physics, right? What force is required to keep the car from rolling down the hill? So my first, so basically what I'm saying is what effect does this have um, the force have on my other vector pretty much is what I'm saying. All right. So I am going to use um, the dot product of my force and my other guy, which I don't, don't actually know yet. And then I am going to multiply it across pretty much is what I'm going to do. All right. So here's what we do. We're gonna first say, what is the force X and Y? Well, force is just straight down. So what is my X when I just go straight down? What is my X when I just go straight down? Zero. Zero. Um, what is my Y if my force is pushing down 3,000? It's negative 3,000. Does everybody see that piece of it? Yes? All right, so we're going to find a unit vector. So we're just going to think of it as being in the unit circle here. So we are going to find the unit vector for V. So we're going to think unit circle, meaning we're just going to say that our magnitude is 1. We just need to worry about our X and Y as a unit. Unit vector, meaning that we don't have to worry about over R. Does that make sense, right? Remember when we did any X and Y, we had to put it over R. For unit circle, my R was always 1. So we're going to do a unit vector. Um, even if like think of it in terms of miles per hour okay think about miles per hour it's that's a unit per one hour unit so that's what we're doing here so if I were to find this remember when I when I need to find my xy I take the magnitude of the vector in this case that's one all right and I multiply it by the cosine of theta that's my x value my y value is my unit magnitude times my sine, okay? My magnitude is one here because it's unit circle, all right? We're talking unit. If it's a unit rate, it is one. And then I just have to do cosine, all right? So I'm gonna fill it in. My theta here is 30 degrees. What is the cosine of a 30 degree angle? What's the sine of a 30 degree angle? There we go, all right? So that's my vector. All right. 
Um, so we are going to do the projection then of U onto V, in this case, force onto V. All right, so the projection then of the force onto my vector here is going to be the dot product of those two. So I'm going to take the dot product of these two, okay? So I'm going to say square root of 3 over 2 times 0. That's just 0, right? Um, plus 1 half times negative 3,000. Negative 1,500, yep. Over the magnitude of my V, we're doing a unit. What is the magnitude of a unit circle? What's the magnitude of that guy? Three over two, or that. you? All right, so we have the square root of square root of three over two squared plus one over two squared, and we're gonna square this guy, right? Yes. What happens when we do that? It's just a one, by the way. It's just a one. Does everybody understand that? We're talking about a unit vector. When it's a unit vector, that's going to be one. Unit is one, all right? So it actually ends up being just this guy. Just that guy, by the way. It ends up just being him. Because this is a unit, and then we multiply it by a unit, we end up with my force being negative 1,500. V. V. V is a unit vector, all right? Um, which means it just has, a, I mean, we don't even have to worry about what it is because we're just doing a 1 there. We're just doing a 1. So 1,500 V, which means 1,500 pounds is what it's going to take. Um, has a magnitude of 1,500 pounds in the direction of the side of the hill. So 1,500 pounds of force there. 1,500 pounds of force. So if they say unit, this guy units out to one, and what you would normally multiply it by would unit out to one. Unit out to one. So why did you use negative 1,500? Because it's one-half times negative 3,000. Okay, mm -hmm. got it, got it. Mm -hmm. But everything else is going to go to one because they told me it was a unit. So go ahead and try the sledding one, guided practice.